Hello and welcome to another episode of Grange TV. I have with me Mr. Eli Hedges and Robert Whitaker will be with us shortly. Um, he's just caught in traffic. Sydney traffic, for anyone that doesn't know, is fucking horrible. Um, Eli, will, Eli and I will try and hold fort until Rob's mercurial personality gets here to take over. Um, and here he is, speaking of the great man himself, philanthropist, gardener, Sometimes UFC fighter, <laughs> Robert Whitaker. Welcome. Right? So sorry I'm late. The traffic was just a nightmare. Coming from La Perouse, they say. La Perouse, La Perouse yeah. Perouse, yeah. And what were you doing, La Perouse? Uh, I was there for BMW. Had a, I had a golf day, and I went up there and had a, did a bit of a speech. <laughs> yeah. Just, what was the speech about? Oh, it's just my career in, in, in the UFC, my career as a mixed martial artist, like my training regime, how I approach certain things. And uh, it went a lot better than I thought it would, to be honest. Why is that? <laughs> uh, I had a lot of engagement from, from the crowd because you, you would think like the target market for BMW isn't generally the same as the target market for the UFC. So, um, no, it was, it was great. I had a lot of feedback, had a lot of questions, and they, they just kept going. It was, it was great. And if anyone's done a Q&A before, it's much better if there are questions asked. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it c kills the whole question bit without questions being asked. Um, what's your relationship with BMW? Um, so at the moment, I'm a current ambassador for BMW in MacArthur. And uh, yeah, we, we, we kicked that off, I think, last year and things are going really well. You know, it's, uh, it's great to pair myself with, with prestigious, you know, honorable brands. Ah, that's awesome. Excellent. Um, Eli, did you watch your fights on the weekend? Did you watch any of the fights? No, I didn't catch them. Didn't catch any okay. of the fights. Well, I uh, guess let's close up the podcast, guys. Yeah. I'll see you later. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, uh, also, guys, please shoot through any questions that you do have, um, and we'll, you know, as we go along, we, you know, we'll, we'll answer them because primarily here, what we're going to discuss, uh, we'll discuss the Jacare uh, Hermanson fight and the Rory and Fitch fight from Bellator. Um, pick those two fights of, of the weekend. There were a lot of great fights, got nothing to do with the fact of whether good fights or not. Um, primarily, I just wanted to get... Um, I suppose Rob has had a relationship with Rory in the past, has trained with him and whatnot, and he's also fought Jacare. So I think it's interesting to get uh, that perspective from, from an insider. And I also have an invested interest in the middleweight division. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, you fucking <laughs> that whole thing. He... Um, <laughs> Rob used to fight in the middleweight division last year. Wow. We're running with that joke, eh? that I used to fight. I've, I've, I've jumped ship. Yeah. <laughs> You're calling me a guy who ducks all the time uh, as well. I've jumped ship. Um, uh, Romero won the second fight. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, mate. Wow. <laughs> um, Good guy. Yeah, so I remember that before. It was ages ago. He used to fight and then um, something happened with chicken pox or yeah, the hernia. I don't, I don't know. Um, can, can you put up the thing, oh, Eli? The no. Um, one one thing I didn't realize was Hermanson's record. That is impressive. That's a lot of fights to have. I, I think I think there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that um like when people talk about impressive runs that that middleweight division there's Hermanson's it, currently he's got a great run. Mm. Um, like Weidman when he went on his run on the way to Silver mm. had a great run. You know, um, Tavares, Brunson, they were all on tears when mm. people, when they fought you. Romero was on a tear when he fought you. Yourself is on a tear. Adesanya is on a, on a tear. Um, there's been a lot of guys that have been able to streak those, like, and against not like against high level competition. So they've had, mm. there's been a lot of guys that have been able to put those tears together. I got a question for you. How, well, I guess, is momentum real? I think so. so. I think confidence is real, not momentum. I think confidence is real. Because you, you see those guys that go on tears and they, they start racking up one, two, three, four wins in a row and they, they look unbeatable. And the people that they fight almost look worse than what they actually are. And then, and then they, they take that, that one loss, you know, for, for whatever reason. They take that one loss and then they don't look anywhere near as good as they were. Well, I ask, I ask you and I, I guess we're gonna, that's going to allow us to segue into um, uh, Rory Fitch. Um, what do you think about about confidence as a fighter? Because if you like, the, the, I suppose the record as well. If you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten fights, twelve, fifteen, twenty fights in a row, um, does the pressure get more? You know what I mean? Like mm. I, I don't know. Or, or, but confidence definitely plays plays a 
plays a role for sure. Uh, do, you, do you think there's actually like studies being done? There's a linear relationship between performance and confidence. Do, you, do but do you think that the confidence only affect on, affects fighters who are affected by that? Because like like from from my myself myself, I understand like obviously I take confidence in what I do and I'm confident that I can do certain things. But I don't look too much into it. You know, I've had a pretty decent run, and I I, I don't feel any better for it. Like. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a different... Because when we saw Brunson running through the division, he was running through the division, you know, and, and, until he met me and, for what, like, <laughs> he lost. And then he hasn't looked like that Brunson again. Yeah, I look, I think you see that as, as well when you, when you see... Um, like, now you're watching... Like, you know, we have the relationship with Brisbane Broncos mm. and they... I think they've gone... Two, two and four or something or, or two out of the last five something, you, you, is that the Friday two in the, yeah. two in the last five and they they weren't winning by they were losing by like I think they lost by a field goal in one game then they lost by a try and it was it was right like right 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 on to the wire and when you when you see the the media the media acts like the Broncos go out there with six players and just get done by a hundred and like that that isn't the case you know no matter which way you want to flip it it's not the case and if you allow that to get into your mind and into your team can you imagine the cancer that would go through the team and, yeah. and people Toxicity don't would spread it yeah and pe- people don't know that they're not they're not in there they're not in there like with the team and un- mm. understanding what's going on and not uh, it's not for me to speak about the broncos in in that regard but um I don't know. Are they doing something tremendously wrong? If you're losing by one or you're losing by four, it's it's not it's not it's not massive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you could you, there's guys like Weidman who have lost a bunch of his last fights, but man, he was like right in there, like yeah. right in there till the end with in every single fight. And Weidman to me is one of the best middleweights, like right up there. There can be. A champion at any day, you know. To, if you, to me as well, I, I, he's one of those guys in the division that I think can beat anyone on any given day. And but but the, he, the, you might you might get a guy that's on a I don't know three and a streak, and Weidman might have lost his last three. But if you ask me who's more dangerous, I'd think fucking Weidman still. Mm. You know what I mean? Although confidence is absolutely massive, and I don't know how much that would affect Weidman's confidence. Only he would know. And people watch it, you know, people watch it and they go, at the Wayans, I could see it in his face. And I'm thinking, what the fuck can you see from your face in, <laughs> you know, in your apartment in Ingadine or wherever you are, you know? What do you think, Eloy? <laughs> yeah, why are they in Ingadine? I don't know. I just thought of somewhere that's, that's far the, away from everywhere. That's where the trolls come from. <laughs> <laughs> no, confidence is big, for sure. As soon as you cop one do you know what I mean you're lacking a bit of confidence and you start to question yourself and you don't perform the same way as when when you're confident do you know what I mean you you can you can tell when people are confident in that as well when they enter the ring and I think you can notice when people are questioning their self a little bit I, I think um, another thing it's it's also like just because you're the louder person doesn't mean you're the more confident person it's also like so it's hard to, for me to gauge anyways sorry you were saying no just exactly that that I think you can see people were lacking confidence. They start to question themselves, maybe question their their, their training, camp or their training or what they're doing and what they're, whether they're eating right. They will change things up, but most of the time, it's the same thing they were doing when they were still winning. That, yeah. that that's what I was getting at. Like if the Broncos went in and said, well, "We're going to change everything and we're going to do this and we're going to do that," or Weidman changes camps and starts training in Sweden, you know, like, but you're not losing by. They're like they're, there's fights that they could have just gone either way. There's like you're not losing the games by a lot. In, in a know? lot of in a lot of Weidman's last fights, you can't. The plan was flawless. His execution was flawless. He just got caught. He got caught, but and he fought like he's. He, <laughs> you look at who he's fighting. You know what I mean? Guys. Yeah, he's fighting top of the food chain guys. Like if you give him, you know, guys that aren't that good, Weidman's going to run right through him. Yeah, the question which might segue into the next bit is like. Do you think Jacare looked the same when he fought Weidman opposed to when he fought Hernandez? Is it Hernandez? Hermanson. H- Hermanson. Oh. <laughs> I always um, messed that up. <laughs> Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. I think. Well, what do you think, Elo? First about that fight. Let's talk about that Jacare and Hermanson fight. Oh, that segue. 
It's clean. It was flawless. It was flawless. <laughs> clean. Red jacket here for finding that Mexican guy. <laughs> I, cheers, Eli. Thank you. What do you think about that fight? Again, I didn't. I've only watched the, some of the. But what do you what do you think? Like of paper. Of, yeah, on paper. On paper, on paper, we talked about it last last podcast, and I, I'm the same. I've got so much respect for Jackeray that I wanted him to win after his last performance and some of the other wins he's had. He can, on any given day, he can beat anyone. Um, I haven't seen too much of Jack, so I didn't really know what to expect. But from some of the highlights and stuff like that, I guess, and his record, yeah, 20 fights, four losses. Um, he's got a pretty good record, and he was ranked number 10. Yeah, so yeah. what will that boost him up to now you think three or four yeah wow. well, he, he usually goes almost all the way up to jack at his position really mm. yep so i guess he is impressing me but i haven't seen enough of him yet to know too much about him mm. but what's next for jack array now i don't know because i think after his loss a little while ago wasn't he even questioning question retirement yeah. Well, he did. He, he, he stopped well, training well, and everything for a while, didn't he? Well, I don't know. That, the, the, these are the things, I guess, that we go since the, the I don't know, the, the seems to be the underlying topic is, can you go back to, to that other screen then? The one we just had there? Yeah. Um, I think going back to that, that thanks, Eli. Going back to that conversation that we were having, like if we're talking about confidence and that, you're asking me how I saw Jacare. I thought Jacare going into that Romero fight, that the first Romero fight that, that they had, which they only had one, but they were going to fight the second time. So going into the, the Romero fight that, that he had, um, he was pretty much looking unbeatable in the UFC. He was the boogeyman. Yeah, I, I remember him going through... Um, him and Romero were yeah, the two well, guys. He went through Musasi as well, and Musasi is no, no joke. And he, <laughs> and he went straight through Musasi, and uh, then he, he lost that fight with, um, with Romero, and then... We, which you know, like, and I don't like saying, "Oh, Romero sh- lost that fight." Clearly, like he didn't lose it clearly, but you know, you could argue that Jacare won that fight. Absolutely. And does that fight count? Because Romero tested positive afterwards. Uh, after that fight, is that the fight he tested positive? I'm pretty sure after that fight, that's when he. Can, took can his you look it up, Eli? On, um, um, but yeah, he, he was he was the boogeyman of the division. Like one of there were two. There was him and Romero. And then and then he took the fight. Jacare took the fight with you. He did the same thing with this Hermanson fight, like where he had stabilized a good position with a good win yep. recently. And then he, um, against Weidman, which that, that fight to me was like crazy. And then he took on Hermanson. Do you Late think he notice. should have? He, yeah, and do you think he should have done that? Because he did the same thing with you. Well, no, he, he did it twice with me. He did, he did it once with, um, uh, what's his name? Bosch? He fought Bosch. I thought he, I thought he said he did it twice with oh, you. No, and I was thinking, fight. look, he only fought you once, man. <laughs> CTE people, it's real. No, he fought. He fought Bosch. I think Bosch was a late replacement. Yes, he did. He fought him and then fought me. Yeah, like a, like a, a couple months after that. And but but he already the thing that w- what I'm getting at as well is like he was lined. Yeah, he was already lined to go moving forward, yeah. and he took a fight with Rob. Credit to him because it allowed Rob to be propelled up you know up through the rankings but um can, can you just check if that's the if that was the fight yeah it's 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 hard to say because um like in, in this how much pressure is put on you from the ufc in a situation like that oh like you've never been in that position but there's been things where you yeah, had to push I, back i on. just froze up because because <laughs> i was no, like, no, i'm not asking you like, to bag your employers no, I'm no, just no. You. i've i've never said no to a fight um but like yeah like it's hard. It's very hard because, for one, they have your paycheck, so that that in itself is a stone pressure. And two, you can't you can't you can't piss off your employers. You know, like they they offer you a fight, you say no. You've seen Dana White go in the media and blow up a bunch of times because yeah. some fighters have done that. And uh, and know, they've got a company to run. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know. You know. It's it's funny with. With Jacare in his position now, I don't know if he if he rushed it or if he's thinking because he's like, knock, knocking on forty too. Yeah, exactly. Or if he's just trying to get in a couple more fights before retirement. You know, because um, to be honest, his fight with his fight with um, from Brunson through Weidman through Gasolum to. Her, her man, her man, her Manson, her Manson. That's such a hard name. Like, 
I'm just going to call him Herman son. Herman son. Just Jack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to call him Jack. Um, yeah, I think he looked the same in all fights. He looked the same. He looked like a dude that that his, his job is to fight. And he, and he rocks up in the fight. He rocks up on the day and he fights. And he looks like he could win at any moment. But he's ran this rodeo so many times before. And he's had so many hard fights. And I saw that in him, especially in his last fight. I saw that when he was sitting down or when he was in, in, in between rounds. I could see it in his face. Because I can, I've felt that where you're like, man, this is a hard fight. And it, and it's draining on, on your spirit. <laughs> on your psyche, absolutely. Yeah, on your, on your body, on your mind. It's just, it's just draining. And he's a guy that has been through a lot of hard fights. A lot. Like he's he's been like he said he's pushing forty, and he's been in the fight game for so long. So he just looks like a guy that's just had so many fights, and it's tiring. If you look at it statistically, I don't think there's been. I I think there's only been one or two. I think Cormier is the one that hasn't ever had anything like in relation to 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 drugs or anything. But there there's never there's never been anyone. That's that that I can think of, and I could be wrong here, and I apologise. But that's that's in those top other, and I already said, I already gave Cormier the not him, mm. but um, all of those guys that have fought into their forties that have that have stayed up in the top three, mm. four, they've all tested positive yeah. after forty. Like they, every single one of them has had at least a positive sample come back. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, whether or not they meant it, whether or not they took it accidentally, whatever, that's a different topic. That's not that's not even yeah. the, the, the topic. But <laughs> the the fact is that that's just straight. Yeah. Like that's like when people talk about um, the cyclists and <clears throat> shit. Like there's yeah. never been one that, you know, had no, that one the Tour de France had nothing to do with, and, with drugs. And it's, it's, it's hard to, it's hard for people to, it's hard for people to um to grasp. Sorry, but it was after that fight that he tested positive, according to yeah MMA, yeah. I just had it up before. C- can you go back to it? So yep. according to I think it's MMA.com, it was uh, after UFC 194 that R- Romero got the drug suspension. Just here. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so R- December, Romero yeah. defeated Ronaldo Souza at UFC 194 in December and was in line for a middleweight title shot before the failed drug test. The sample was collected in the days after the fight, so it was not an in competition uh. test. So it was it was that one. That, that, that was a fight. Okay. Um, so I don't want to get on this topic. We rant. No, no, but I'm now. not. That's, that's <laughs> no, not thing. That's no, just, but that's that annoys me, and I want to rant, but I'm uh, not gonna rant. No, nah, it's I can't. your podcast. It's like if if you get a positive sample that comes back a couple of days after a fight, you don't you don't think it had any effect on the fight a couple of days before it. Like honestly, you think you know, okay, like. Well, why is he taking it after the fight? Like, oh, I just, I don't want to get into it. It makes me mad. And it's hard for me to understand. Like, I don't understand. It's like these guys are reading our textbook and it says, does not, yep, it falls between this criteria, you're good. It's like, use some lateral thinking. But, um, what were we talking about? I don't know. Going back to the homage. Oh, no, 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 no. I remember. The, we were talking about trying to like being in that top five later in your career late and I, what i was saying is like it's hard for people to to, to grasp this it's, it's like fighting in itself is a very strenuous sport i don't know if people can see just that by the sport. nature of its name <laughs> yeah. it's called a fight <laughs> i don't know if people can see that it's strenuous but it's strenuous like physically and especially mentally like it, like mentally it, it's way 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 worse than physically so anything you see that a fighter has taken physically on his body with the blood, the cuts, the sore, the bruises, it's at least twice as much mentally. It's more than that even. It's 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 a lot. And think about fighting for a living, like making your wage, making your, your ends meet by trying to fight other people. Okay, that's very stressful in itself. The nature of it is stressful. And then doing that year after year, day after day is hard. Like you have to do this this stressful thing, this stressful activity, which is fighting. And let's say during those years, like you, you do it. You do Has it got nothing to do when I, I'm also going to give because I, I know the people. 
Like, oh, he's, he finds it stressful and don't fight. It's like, it's not even about that. Like, there's a lot of activities that you can like, but they're still stressful. Raising children is stressful. Being married creates stress. Being divorced creates stress. Um, playing video games. Playing video games is stressful. stressful. <laughs> Having, ha- like, the, the birth of your child will be stressful. All those things, although, they, although, you, although they're great moments in your life and you enjoy them, but they're yeah. still stressful. Still stress is stress. Like, yeah. <laughs> good or bad, it's stress so, is stress. Buying a house, stressful. So Very stressful. Oh, my God. Getting so locked stressful. in a cage with, you know, a trained <laughs> killer. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's <laughs> fucking stressful, you know. So imagine, like, living like that, that stressful lifestyle of, like, having to fight for your for your money, having to fight for your living. And your family stress too. Yeah, like everyone around you. And if you've got kids, that's that's tenfold more. If you've got a partner, that's that's more stress. If you've got cars that you have to pay off, if you have a house that you have to pay off, if you have cousins that come to you all of a sudden homeless, or if you have a if you have anyone, like if you have two dogs and you have to travel for the year, then you have to find someone to look after them, that's stressful. I, I think the other thing people don't understand is like you don't stop being humans. Like you still have <laughs> like you when you get home your dog doesn't give a fuck. You don't go, hey, you know no, it was a close fight and I got yeah. my, my leg hurts, so the dog's still gonna jump on you. Yeah. And you know what kills me? It's like I get home sometimes and I forgot to pay my electricity bill and they're sending me last notice before they cut my power off and they've added six hundred dollars because it's late and i'm like that's stressful that's stressful i like i don't need that right now <laughs> like, but imagine dealing with that year in and year out and let's and let's say that the fights you had were hard fought like you had five rounds with romero or you had you had like three hard rounds decisions with another well sometimes fight. sometimes you, you fight and you fight for one round and that was a crazy fight yeah and that round you just left it all out there like imagine doing that for year after year already i'm creating a picture that is very stressful now imagine being in someone like your jacques who's pushing 40 who's been doing this for decades romero anderson yeah for yeah all those guys like doing this for decades how do you find that that how do you find the energy to 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 get across the line how do you find that hunger still when you're just being beaten down. You're beaten down. It's it's hard. Like I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like pushing into my late thirties. That's why I've given myself a like an, a cut off date. Like I'd like I'd like yeah, a date where I'd like to be. Do you have up. it? I do, I do. Or like I'd like I'd like to do all my most significant things in my career, whether that's holding the belt, defending the belt, moving up not moving down. <laughs> like, yeah. Whatever that is. But I'd like to be wrapped up around thirty four, thirty five. Um do you think that someone that I think you were talking about when someone like Jacare, because it's similar when you when you're hearing some of the comments that Rory made, and and like I'm only <coughs> talking about the re, like to me re, the religion is is a conduit for it. So say for example whether it's religion or whether it's the birth of a child or whatever it is, whatever it is that's making you have that I don't know if I've got that killer instinct in me any, any, anymore. Once that enters your head, how, how do you combat that as a fighter? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's hard because I think, I think that in itself is like a point where you need to kind of find yourself again. You need to find out who you are or how you've changed from who you were. And you need to kind of come in, come to terms with that and find yourself again, find your identity, identify yourself once again, you know, um, and, and that's different for everyone. Cause you know, he may, he may soul search and find out like, you know what? I'm not who I was and I don't want to do it anymore. And that's fine. Like, good on him. Or he may go through all this and be like, you know what? I was just having an off day, you know, and the training camp was really hard and I didn't sleep much because of my newborn and, like, I just wasn't feeling it in the gym and he's having had a bad run. And then, and then he, he understands that, identifies that, turns a corner and he's back. You know what I mean? It's, um, you don't know. You don't know how he is. Do, do you think... Um yourself personally have you gone through stuff like that definitely and if so how many times and whatnot yeah definitely like there's there's one major time to date uh that that i can recount and i I think i've i've like i've i've had identity things throughout my life where i've kind of had to sit back and and put together who i want to be and who i think i am and who i actually am and my motivations and all that multiple times and i think a lot of us as, as people as humans do like um whether it's consciously or subconsciously like we, we do you do see someone that. for that yeah I, I i like it's great like tim i there's a i have a 
a guy we've had on the podcast, Tim. I I, I, ch- I chat to him, and I just um, it's good to talk to people. Like it, it it's great, and and just voicing some of your thoughts it makes it better. You know, getting getting a checkup mentally isn't a bad thing. You know, it, it's a it's a great thing. No, like, I think it's like anything else. I think it's it's essential. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. Like, um, no, def- please go on. Um, and yeah, like. So I, I check I check in with Tim and I, I just talk to him how I've been feeling like what I've been doing, and um, he's not sitting me down, going, so tell me about your dad or tell me about your mum. Yeah. It's not like that. It's not like and I think the movies I think like the general consensus is like that it has a very bad rep, like like mental health sort of um, sort of things. And I don't think like I've said it before, but I don't think people treat it like if you if you said oh, I got a bad knee and I said go see a physio. Eli wouldn't be like, oh, he's a physio. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, but but if you say I'm seeing a psych, yeah. people see it a, a lot differently. Yeah, you know? they, they color it. And they, but then at the same time, they they also <clears> then <throat> put the same mandates for a physical injury. So they'll say to you, oh, you've got, um, you know, you're depressed or you have anxiety or you're not feeling well or whatever. In four weeks, you should be better. And you're like, no, it's a sprained ankle. That's four <laughs> weeks, you know, yeah. for mental health and you're talking about chemical imbalances in your brain or you just burnt down, there's no more serotonin happening. So it might take six weeks, it might take one day, it might take three months and however long it has to take, it'll take. And I think it's even more prevalent in high-end athletes and probably more prevalent in people who get hit in the head. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, so... It might, if, you, if you step into an octagon and fight people for a living and you think you're all good... <laughs> Like, <laughs> you're, you're all good to begin with. Yeah, like, then you don't need anything. Like, you're good. Like, it, it's, it's one of those things. And I think, like, I, I'm not speaking for him. Like, I would never do that. But, I, like, he may be just finding who he is again. Or, like I said, he may be we're having a bad day. Rory, Rory, yeah. We're talking about Rory. Rory. We're talking about Rory. Or he may be having a bad day. Like, that was a hard fight. That was a hard fight. Anyone who goes through a fight like that, <laughs> we'll give a speech similar I am sure like if you fought five hard rounds to a draw of all things so there's no high there's no low there's just confusion really yeah yeah um, and you fight five hard rounds to a draw and and your emotions and everything isn't going everywhere and you can give a composed speech <laughs> like good on you like <laughs> wow I think um, which which fight do you want to talk about first? Hermanson. Well, we're, and we're talking about Rory Fitch now, so let's just do that. What do you think of that fight? Did you think it was a draw? Did you give it to Rory? Did you give it to Fitch? That's the, that's the thing. I think draws are funny. Like I think I think decisions in themselves are very touch and go, especially in our sport. Like um, I feel normally when you get to a split decision or when you get to a fight that is so close that it could go either way, you kind of have to be happy for it to go either way. So, and that's exactly how I felt with this fight. I thought that the fight was very close. I would have been happy if Fitch got it. I would have been happier probably because I know Rory if Rory got it. And um, but the, the draw, as a fighter, as a competitor, draws like they must suck. Like because you you you've had close wins and you've had yeah. close losses. Yes, in the Court McGee fight. As yeah, well. but I guess I guess one or the other gives you closure. Where a draw kind of leaves you questioning, like it's not as bad as a loss, it's not as good as a win. It's kind of like limbo of of the combat game. It, it's yeah, it must be a hard thing, especially like if, especially the the type of fight it was. It was such a hard fought fight for it to have gone to a draw, for you to have gone out there and given everything you have, everything you have, and to come up with no reward nor a like what a loss it's yeah I, I i the only thing that comes to mind for me is confusion like a bit confusing like what did i do wrong what did i do right what do you think of the fight itself oh it was it was it was it was hard you could see it like and you, you know what like like when Rory came out in that fourth round i was i was looking at he's been there so many times you could see it in his face like here we are again and I just, you know, sorry. One of the things that 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 I I think sometimes and let me get to the questions. And and again, I I don't want to um, I don't want to just guess at, at what Rory's feeling, but it's like, 
you know, sometimes like you're better off not knowing that something's going to hurt. And then you're like, fuck, at least I wish I knew that was going to hurt. Yeah. And then, and then next time I'd be prepared. Yeah. And then the next time you'd know it's going to hurt and you're prepared and it's okay. But probably by the 10th time it happens, yeah. you're like, dude, it's going to hurt. I don't want to do it. This is going to suck. Yeah, this is going to suck. And I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm not saying, um, yeah, I'm not saying that that's the case, but I don't know. What do you, like, I could see that in him too. Like that, that he was. Yeah, definitely. Like in that last Romero fight that I had, that was one of the fights where I'm like, man, this is a hard fight. Like I consciously thought to myself in the fight, I thought, man, this is hard. And he would have felt that too. He and, absolutely felt that and, too. And, yeah. he, and you know what's funny? It's like today... I think I don't want that to happen again. <laughs> that nah. sucks. I, I just, spoke to I spoke to Masvidal straight straight after the fight, like before the decision, because he he was coming out of the thing, and like I, I've always been a fan of Masvidal's. And as soon as he come up to the thing, I was um like you know hey da 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 da, and he um I said to him man like it was just fucking a fantastic fight, and Masvidal's a fellow that knows a thing or two about fighting, mm. and he was like. We were both like that was a fight was fucking incredible yeah. regardless of who won you know yeah um and I can't imagine like being able to go through too many of those no it's and it's one of those things like when you've had when you've had a fight that is hard and I mean like hard mentally and physically it it's not pleasant <laughs> it's not pleasant you can't simulate that in training as it, you you can go to training and get shark tanked by every bloke in the gym it's not the same it's not the same. And um, yeah, when when you've had fights like that, you don't want to have fights like that. Like, there's not a part of me that goes, "Can't wait for this war." <laughs> What's your technical breakdown of um, that, like, of, of the actual fight, of getting through it? Yeah. Um, no, no, of, of the of Rory and Fitch. What was the actual, your, technically, the things that you saw there? Like, how how do you stop Fitch coming forward? Because GSP was able to do it off the back of that jab, mm. you know, and. Um, what, what, why, why do you think Rory Fitch. wasn't able to do it? He cracked Fitch with a couple of head kicks, but yeah, that I a, thought a he's done. Time. And you know what? I thought it, the fight would play. <laughs> Fitch took a lot of those head kicks, a lot of a lot of <laughs> oh, no. full, a lot of full shin across the whole side of his face. <laughs> like it was, because this because I'll, I'll say this. There's also the thing where you know people go like, blah, you know, oh, you could have done this, could have done that, and I think like. But he fucking landed shins across the guy's yeah. head. Give some credit to Fitch too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, if if you throw a kick and the guy eats yeah. it and takes you down, like, I'm almost pat him on the back. Yeah. To to be fair, I thought Fitch fought great. Like, I think that was one of the better best versions of Fitch I've seen. Um, but um, Rory doesn't. He doesn't have the same like fast jab. Exit that the GSP does. Yeah, absolutely. Rory, Rory is really, really, really good at controlling that center and especially lining up the straight line kicks and controlling that range by moving back and forward. He doesn't, he doesn't do as well as as getting in, popping him, getting out, circling out with that lateral movement. Like he's not, he's not as light as as George is on his feet. He's more, he's much more planted. And, and takes like um he's very methodical like a very uh very methodical crafty sort of fighter and um he he, he dismantles people like that yeah but Fitch Fitch knew what he had to do he knew what he had to do and he just did it and as you just said like he walked through kicks big shots and he just but he he just kept going he just kept going for it he didn't hesitate he didn't hesitate on the way in he didn't because a lot of a lot, of, I know a lot of wrestlers that when they take a big shot, like a big kick, or they know, like I would assume, like when when fighting Rory, like a wrestler would be hesitant to to go in because of that. Rory's got a great rear leg snap kick, like straight down the middle, and um, you know he just he didn't. And if you go in there a little bit hurt or or not right on your game, his ground game's good too. Yeah, ground game's really good, especially yeah his top game. His, his, his top ground and pound is is unreal. Like I think his I think um, Rory's grappling is is super underrated, super underrated. Yeah. Um, you've trained with Rory, mm. and you've you've dealt with Rory. Yeah. What uh and from the comments that he's made recently, what what how do you what do you think like what like 
What's he like as a person? What was he like? Because you back then you were both what in your early twenties. Yeah, young guys. And and he was definitely a killer. And he yeah. had his personality was. I'll let you talk about that. And then seeing him now and the comments he's made and and whatnot. Um, what's that say to you? Um, well, what's he? What was he like? What was what was the interaction? Because you were both coming yeah. up, but he was a little more established. No, no, he was he was already there. Yeah, <laughs> I remember because uh, when I was at TriStar, he was fighting Musashi. Like, no, he wasn't fighting Musashi. Yeah. Musashi, he fought recently, dude. No, 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 not, not then. Before, when he, he years ago, he didn't fought Musashi then. No, it must be someone else. No, no, Musashi was a uh, heaps. Can we, can we find pop yeah. it up and I'll I'll remember. But yeah, when I was training with, him, like, he's a top bloke. Like, he was he was very happy to to have any um have new guys like try out like and, and to, to be a part of the team he was very welcoming in that sense he um, never struck me though he always struck me as very I, i've never met him but he always struck me as like <clears throat> don't don't think i'm just saying like the the kill him the image that i get that i get across <laughs> kill him the image that comes across he seems like a like a serial killer no he's the the, the thing is like when he's training and when he's when he's fighting like he's He's a killer, and like honestly, I thought he was a fucking serial killer. Like he can go. Look, the condit. I think you're talking about. Scroll down. Yeah, up. it was. No, 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 no. I didn't. No, I wasn't there in ten. Um. Oh, it was Meyer, Damien Meyer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Is that when you were down there? Yep. No, it's 2014. You weren't mm. there for 2014. Because he, 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 that's, look, he fought Lola before that. When were you, like, when did you win the smashes? I don't know. You were, how old were you, 21? <laughs> no, 22. How old were you, when, how, what year was it when you were 22? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. It would have to be 2012. 2012. 2012. I could have worked that out, actually, that's... I just embarrassed myself. <laughs> that's they, that they, they're the that that's it would have been around that time frame when he fought Nate Diaz, when he fought Carlos Condit, Mike Pyle, like all those guys there. That would have been around that eight that, that region there. BJ Penn. I don't even think BJ. I don't know. Because I I know that by the time that he was fighting by 2014, you weren't training there. Time goes so fast. <laughs> How many fights has he had? A million, dude. 20 and 5. And a lot of those were hard fights. A lot of wars, man. So, so yeah, so what was it like? Because you sparred, you sparred a lot? No, so, so he was a nice, nice enough no, guy. No, he, 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 he was a lovely guy. Like, um, and he's a fun fact. Like, when we were sparring once, he took me down and pinned my hand underneath me and beat the shit out of me. But bad, like, like, what, like, like, I thought I'm gonna die here. <laughs> like, this is it. He's stunting me now. Like, I'm dead. And and he had um, that his overwhelming uh, empathy and compassion come through in that sparring round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just, nah. He just fed me. <laughs> like, he just he pinned my hand, and like, this was up against the cage. I got pinned here, and he was hit me here. Over and over, over and over, mercilessly, mercilessly. <laughs> but I think, I think, I think for us, said stand up, like let him up. Um, how, did you spar with him a lot? Yeah, I, I was the last one I was there. I was um, I was sparring with him a fair bit. He's a uh, super talented. Like he, he is so good at combat. He really is. And um, you know, honestly, honestly, was it always that one sided? <laughs> Um, not in the stand-up game, it wasn't as it wasn't as one-sided, but in the grappling game, definitely. Yeah, he was he definitely. was a lot better at, than you. What's to say? <laughs> this guy said Rob can't add twenty-two years to his birth year. <laughs> I, I worked that out afterwards. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I embarrassed myself. I said that. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. It's been a long day. I've spent I, a lot of time in the car. I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, you did though. Uh, no, but, I didn't. I didn't take the piss out of you. <laughs> in terms of grappling, he was way, way higher, and he was he was very good. But honestly, to sum up, so how good is Fitch's grappling then? Oh, it's 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 always been very, very good. Yeah, but that puts in perspective. Yeah. You know? Um, 
But well, do you see do you see a big difference though then when 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 you're saying this the stuff you're talking and then you hear his comments and um how how he can't like pull the trigger he doesn't feel because like to me like whether like like to me I think him finding you know religion and finding a positive path in your life anything that's going to help you I think that's great my question is if you're feeling that that I can't pull the trigger anymore I don't feel like I want to hurt people and you're making those comments how, how do you how do you see when, when 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 I saw the, the after the post fight conference and the, the after the, the speeches he's just a dude that looks tired He's a guy that has had 25 fights, probably 24 of those are wars. Like yeah. I remember when he was young, young, starting up his tear, he had he was having Condit. blood. That was a Condit He was time. having blood baths with people, like yeah, yeah, yeah. from an early age, like and from 18. Yeah, he's been fighting for so long. Like he just looks like a guy that's a bit tired. And and that's the thing. And he hasn't stopped fighting. No, and it's not the number of fights. <clears throat> it's like who have you fought? Yeah, and, and how hard are those yeah. fights? Yeah, like I, I, I dare anyone to fight Condit and say. And say like, yeah. And just say they enjoyed it, and they'll do it again. Or fight Lawler, or fight Lawler twice. Yeah, fight Lawler twice, and tell me if you can still pull the trigger afterwards. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to <laughs> use your hands anymore. You won't even be able to butter your fucking bread. <laughs> he just looks like a dude that's been tired, and he's never, he hasn't taken any time off, like serious time off. Like, yeah, he had some layoffs in between fights, but they're always in between fights. He was always training. Knowing he was going to get ready for the next one, maybe he just needs a break. You know, he just looks like a guy that's tired. Like, and I'm sure fighting the, those fights that he's had is tiring. Did you see anything that at any point that was a glaring thing where the fight could have gone either way, or, or and it went, you know, went into a draw? Do you think that any either one of those guys really had it for the take? Mm, no, honestly, no. It was, it was. It, it, it was it was it was a hard fight to judge. Like I'm glad it wasn't me judging. Like it, it was a super hard fight to to judge. And it's like what are they? What are they? It's on the must system, so yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like you could see Rory was landing clean shots, but it's not stopping him. And Fitch was getting takedowns, but wasn't doing a lot, a lot of work on the ground. But you know what's real, man? If you're waiting at the bus stop and a guy comes up to you and grabs you and holds you know people go it's not you know on the street but if a yeah. guy comes up to you at the bus stop and grabs you <laughs> and just holds you on the ground like this <laughs> like not that's not what happened to rory i'm not saying that's what happened but i'm saying if a guy holds you down and he holds you down for 10 minutes yeah you didn't win that fight you didn't win that fight <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a fucking draw you missed your bus yeah and you're late <laughs> Yeah. And you're all dirty. Yeah. You know you're probably gonna lose your job. Yeah yeah like you didn't win that you didn't win that fight. Um, and so with the Hermanson and Jacare, what do you think? Um, yeah, like, you know, it's funny. Very similar. I thought Jacare was a guy that on any given day can fight. Like if he was here now and he said, you want to fight? He'd be like, okay. And we'd go in the back and punch on. Like he's yeah. a guy that, that can fight. But he, he's... That was he, the that, worst Jacare accent ever. <laughs> 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 I can't remember what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm any good at accents, anyway. But um, but Jacare was another guy that just looked tired. Like he, again, he had he's done this before, and it's not fun. And, and Hermanson it did him no favors by being so good. No, Hermanson <laughs> just pressured pressured him constantly. Two hundred and fifty six. So he threw he threw four hundred ninety six total strikes and landed two hundred fifty six strikes. That was Hermanson. Oh, that's five hundred, basically five hundred strikes. It's like flyweights don't throw that. You know what I mean? Like that. That's that's a lot of strikes in a round. Like Jack Cody threw two hundred and five, landed one hundred and twenty. Fair enough. Eighty of them were fucking hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a, well, it actually says significant strikes. It was ninety out of one hundred and seventy-five, and it just shows eh, as well. Like Jack Cody just throws, man. He throws like real heavy, heavy leather. Uh, do, I don't know how. Jack like lived through half of those shots. They were clean shots that like almost decapitated. Like has decapitated other people. Like you, you know what I saw? I saw that he hurt Jack, but he didn't. Either he'd been too hurt, or maybe it was age or whatever. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. You make but a lot he, of enemies on this. Podcast. Man, everyone's just hating me. <laughs> he he um he hurt him, but he was too hurt to capitalize. Too hurt or too yeah. tired or too whatever. Yeah. 
Because he hurt him, man. He did. In in round three, I thought I thought like this is the turning point. I thought like um I thought Jacare was going to come back and a couple more body shots go up high again and then finish the fight because in the end of three, Jack didn't look so good. No, <laughs> he looked hurt, bad. But um, how do you recover from getting hurt? Because you've been hurt. In, you've been hurt in the third round. No, no never. No. How do you recover, or how would you recover hypothetically? Um. Well, hypothetically, if I had ever been hurt, I guess, you know, you just got to kind of square yourself off, like go back to basics. Um, you have to slow things down. You have to slow things down. Um, but I guess that's the opposite of what Jack did. <laughs> just sped things up another notch. But do you think it was because Jacare couldn't go with him as well? Definitely. Like, um, I think if Jack would have slowed down, Jacare would have won. Do you see a difference in... Jacare that fought Hermanson versus the Jacare that fought you. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because I, me being in there is very different to me being outside there. You know, like I do see a difference from in terms of like the timeline, like the Jacare from then, opposed to Jacare now. Jacare now looks a bit tired. Did you see a lack? Or can you go back to the to the thing? Did you see? Like he he attempted three takedown attempts, mm. and arguably he's got the best grappling. Not not even arguably, I'd say like well, arguably because he got taken down in this well, fight. That was, that, that my, to me, he didn't shoot a lot. Yeah, well, I've got a question for you. How good is Jack's grappling? Good. How good? Like good, good. He's wrestled his whole life. He's won a, few, a few, yeah. He's won a few big competitions in Scandinavia. That's in what I've noticed as well. Lately, Jacare hasn't been shooting a lot. Like nah. in his last few fights. He hasn't been shooting a lot. And he used to shoot. It didn't matter who you were. He, if you said, I won, I just won Mundials, he would have said, you're fucking under the ground, buddy. <laughs> you know? like, yeah, like, yeah. And, well, he shot, on, he shot on Romero as well. Like, shot on everyone. Everyone. He, he just... And that's how, that's how he built his name. He just like, shot no matter how... Crap. Not only that, he got Romero down. Yeah. No, and that, no, that, does, that wouldn't be easy. No matter how crap the shot was, like he would just shoot it anyway somehow still get it even if his head was on the mat and he had like three toes in both hands he got it somehow like he'd crawl his way back up and then you're dead like <laughs> if he gets you on your back you're dead like he kills you so so the fact that he only shot three times to Hermanson's 10 Hermanson landed three out of 10 takedowns but the fact that that he that I mean Jack had no submit no real submission attempts um Hermanson had one prop one I don't know how the fuck he got out of that um, I mean, yeah, like I know everyone says now, everyone knows this thing, but everyone nah, goes super simple, dude. You just yeah, you just, you just put your back to the mat, put that hip on the floor. Yeah. You, your neck would break, man. If you're not built like that. But, anyways, like no, no, that is it's unbelievable, but it shows the level to do it while you're rocked, too. Um, but, but to me, I think that's one of the things that surprised me the most in the last couple of fights that he just hasn't shot. And a lot of the wrestlers you see, it was people don't understand that big double legs that they take the most energy. And if you're not a young, strong guy anymore, yeah, it it and it's hard. It'd be hard to even hold down a young, strong guy. Yeah, like yeah, it's hard. Um, like Do I you said, think he should have gone for the guillotine? Who Jack? Yeah, yeah. Why not? I'm just asking him. <laughs> need to get fucking defensive. <laughs> nah, Twenty um, minutes ago, I didn't even know who he was, and now. <laughs> Now he's sticking up for him. I'm not. I'm not saying he shouldn't have. I'm just asking. If do you think that they that that's something he should have, or do you think he should have just kept hitting him? Um, I think he would have choked out anyone not named Jacare that day. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I think, I think if he would have landed it, he would have been the next Jacare, like to every other critic. Like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You gotta. You what? You miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Oh, uh-huh, well, there we go. <laughs> Hey, um, there's a question here. I want to actually go to... What's the main difference in fighting Jacare and Romero? Um, for me... Yeah, what was the main difference? I'm assuming... Um, yeah. What were the main differences? I guess, like, if I had to, like, make it real basic, like, if Jacare gets me down, I die. If Romero gets me down, I might be able to get back up. More or less. Like, if in real layman's terms. Yeah. Like, to, get, to go to the ground with Jacare is... It's it's playing with fire, like it's dangerous, dangerous. And in terms of striking, with Jacare and Romero, yeah, the difference. I mean. uh, difference is night and day again. Like Jacare, if he lands, he'll he's gonna ice you. If Romero, but 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 the thing with Jacare is he's not as fast, he's not as quick, and he's he he doesn't explode in. 
Romero, same thing. If he hits you, he ices you, but he can explode in. He can get in. And I, I think just watching from the, just being so close, it's not just uh, the ability for of Romero to cover space, like the trajectory from A to B, like in a straight line. It's also he goes A to B up and down. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He goes, he goes from the lowest double I've ever seen in my life to a flying knee. Like, <laughs> I, I promise you, and I remember this in the fight, the first fight with him. There are a couple of times I'm in front of him, and I explode forward to to, to land a shot, and he disappears from my vision. <laughs> Like he's just not there anymore, and I have to. And I look down, and he's shooting a low single on me. Like it's it's that fast, like that far. Honestly, and I remember it in the fight. It's just ridiculous. He's in front of you, and then he just drops his level. Yeah, out. like we're both here, and then I go in fast, and then he's down near my ankles. Like and like, but my vision is still straight, and then he flies forward, and then my body's moving because. Where else could he be? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> do, do you think in, in Romero, Romero as well, being the wrestler, he's, he's slowed down with his takedowns and, and whatnot as well? In yeah, his last you know, few that's fights. a funny thing. Like his style has completely changed in the last two years. Like he went, he went from a wrestling guy who took people down and then beated, beated them up. Beated. <laughs> <laughs> but he always had good striking. He's beated a lot of people. <laughs> beated the shit out of him. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm sorry. Mate, I understand. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, but yeah, he, he has knocked a lot of people out. <clears throat> but he was really known for taking him down and then dropping heavy leather. Yeah. Like, and then just creaming people. But now he's kind of shelled up and I don't know. He's put... It's like he's, his basket was like wrestling and then striking and athleticism and he's gone all the eggs and he's put it in the striking and athleticism and put the basket for athleticism in yeah, there. yeah like he's just like, he's like I'm going to just take every shot I have to to land one and that one will kill you how um if how how would you see them if they fought again how who do you think would win Jacques and Romero yeah if if Romero comes out against anyone honestly anyone like he did with me I don't see him losing to anyone I see it very hard. Like, I just don't. He, he, that Romero too was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a truck. Um, what have we got here? Beated, brain damaged, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. What did you think about Jack's conditioning and stamina? Bobby beated Whittaker. <laughs> um, I thought, I thought, um. I thought, I thought that Jack's cardio was out of this world. Crazy, yeah. For a middleweight, it, like it was just for an anyone. Yeah, so it was. But yeah, but like middleweights aren't known for their high gas tanks. Like it, it was so high paced, like so high paced. But I gotta wonder, like, how much of that would have been affected if, it, like, he was fighting someone with a better jab, someone to keep him off him, or if it would have taken like someone he couldn't outstrike, like he outstruck. Jacqueline. Do you um, do you want to explain that about the jab and whatnot? Well, because like um, it's very hard to walk forward and pressure someone if you're eating punches constantly, and you can you you can do that, but you can't do that for five rounds. Do you think Jacare should have utilized the jab more? I don't think he could utilize the jab more. I don't think it's in Jacare's arsenal, um, because Jack Jack was still eating shots from Jacare, and Jacare's setups aren't great. Like, his, his boxing isn't great. You know, surprisingly, though, his head movement was on point. He's better, and he's got that left rip to the body that he does. Yeah, the- yeah, yeah. Like, that was great. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I I feel like Jack steered the fight in, to the, in the direction that he wanted it to go and kept it there. And he almost got derailed round three, but then got it back on track round four and five and just, yeah, had a good win, very good win. Congratulations, Jack. Um, let me see. Rob is a weeboo. <laughs> okay, October 6th, UFC 243, Bankwest Stadium. What have you heard about that, Rob? Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything official from the UFC. These are obviously internet internet rumors at this point. Uh, 
Do you know what is crazy? And I hope they don't do it on that weekend. Mm, grand it, final. That is the NRL grand final. Yeah. And that will fucking murder the pay-per-views. <laughs> and also, for those of you that don't know that are watching from overseas, um, that's like a massive weekend in Australia. It's yeah. also the weekend of um, the Curry knockout, which is also going to smash a lot of Rob's following and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm, um, I'm going to try and move the date, more or less. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that's a good weekend to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, as for Bank West, I'm very happy if we we can get it out west. You know, um, still still trying to get Camden in the mix, but we'll have to wait and see. Camden Community Centre. That yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alessania will fuck you till you go mental. I certainly hope not. I certainly hope not. That would be so uncalled for. <laughs> How long would it take for me to actually go mental, but Like, before I lose my mind. I just... What if I don't? <laughs> How would that even happen? Would there be no one to stop me? Yeah. <laughs> what, what if I don't go crazy, man? Does he have, does he have the endurance to go? Fuck it hell. How would you beat Jack, Rob? Um... Just outstrike him. Outstrike him. Hurt him on the way in. Hurt him when he backs up. You got to. I, I wouldn't try to keep his pace. I'd try to slow him down with better shots. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely target legs. Have to, have to chop his legs out from under him to slow him down a little bit. You have to make him hesitant to come in. You have to give him a reason why he can't come in. And then when he does, you have to make him regret it. Now you can fight him. <laughs> that, anyone can fight him anyone, with that game plan anyone <clears throat> uh, Rob who's funnier Pedro or Tuivasa Ooh, okay. I'm going to make an enemy here um, I think they're a two piece act to be honest like you don't really find one without the other I and think, they're usually on the Ty's same I funnier joke. sorry Tyson yeah, I'm a bit I, I just think he's funnier he's in Sydney he'll kill you yeah but but <laughs> I'm not saying he's not he can't fight. I just I actually find Tyson a more serious character, and um, I find uh, Ty much funnier, <laughs> much funnier than you, Tyson. <laughs> Ty is much funnier than you. Uh, I do find Ty funny. Are you are you serious about going up to fight <clears throat> John Jones? Um, at the moment, I'm very serious about fighting Adesanya. But you know where where my path leads after this fight? Who knows? You know. Um, my biggest, my biggest things are already kind of lined up and set in stone. How do you see Hermanson versus Romero? <clears throat> um, yeah, well, like what I said earlier, I don't see anyone. If Romero rocks up to any fight like he did for me in that second one, I don't see anyone beating him. Well, and that's that. Um, I kicked Romero square in the face, square in the face, and didn't phase him. Well, I also read one of the comments here before that said that your uh, kicking technique is not good, nor your punching technique. Maybe you should look into that. <laughs> Maybe we can get, what's that called? The IP address? We can find the person's IP address and we can tra you can train with them. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, now you're a brown bill. Will you look to take fights to the ground for the submission finish? Um, yes, now that I'm a brown belt. Now, that's a, that was a tip. Yep. If you look at Rob's earlier fights, before the UFC, he won a lot of the fights by submission, but just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, I bet Adesanya will outstrike you standing 100,000%. Is that a million percent? I don't know. That's going to... Well, what do you bet me? <laughs> what do you bet? That's a, what, are that's you gonna, what are you, you going to bet? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that bet. Fab, I'm going bald at the back of my head. What should I do? I have a small head. <laughs> Um, I have a similar situation myself. I actually brought back the beard due to popular demand. And I would say to you to get a comb over. That's probably the, the most <laughs> realistic and natural thing for you to do. That's me. <laughs> After you beat JJ, would you go down and take on Cejudo to unify the <laughs> balance? <laughs> uh, what do you think? My skeleton probably weighs more than that weight division. Like, I, I can't. Like, going down isn't an option. I think you could. You could. <clears throat> Fab, why are you bald? My dad's bald. It's a hereditary. 
I don't choose to be bald. I don't yeah. want to be bald. You think I want to fucking look like this? Yeah, come on, man. Show some class. <laughs> so fucking slack, man. But these these YouTube followers, like... They're oh, horrible, they're man. They're horrible, horrible people. Like, every third comment is swearing at me. <sighs> what do you think about Mike Perry saying he's interested in coming down under to train with you guys? Interesting mix. Personally, I think he's too loose a cannon. You'll probably bore him. Train when- with... With who? With you? Did he say that? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't can we think. can we have some clarification? Did he say you guys or Australians? To train with Australians in general, or to train with Rob? Because a lot of other Australians don't want to train with us. <laughs> <laughs> we are the black sheep of the Australian MMA world. No one likes us because we train too hard. Um. Sorry, we fight for a living. <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you feel? So is Mike like how do we, how do we feel about Mike? Perry training in Australia or how do we feel about him training with you? He wants to come down and train. like. But with who? It's just really he's like, talking about you. Is that? I'm assuming clarify? it's our podcast. Did they, did they clarify? <laughs> but he said you guys down under. No, it, it, there's a very, very big line in the sand, like which one is which. If he wants to come to Australian train, yeah, well, by all means, please. He wants to come train with you. If he wants to come train with our team, yeah, like we'll have to wait and see. Like, <laughs> Come down, let's just... Let's just grab a coffee, see where it leads. You know what? I actually say this about Mike Perry. He seems like a good bloke. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. No, he looks like a good guy. He, he, like when he, when he talks in that, like when <clears throat> he seems like a bit rough, but he seems like to have a good heart. He doesn't seem like a... What, what's your take on that, <clears throat> Eli? Don't worry, Mike. Eli doesn't train with us anyways, but <laughs> he fucking hurt my leg once, but anyway, it's a different story. But um, No, I like Mike Perry. He, he's, I don't know. I think he builds it up a little bit for the camera and stuff like that, which you might... Do you know what I mean some fighters think it's what they have to do? But I find him super funny. Did, yeah. you, did you see how he almost died? How before Jacare saved him? He was like there was a, a, a rubber band or something, and he was playing around and said, "Ah, oh, look at me!" And he hung himself. And fucking no, I swear to God, yeah, look it up. Can you look it up? No, look it up. No, please look it up. And and he hung himself, and his wife was wife or girlfriend was like, "Okay, Mike, stop being an idiot. Get down," and he'd gone out. And Jacare came and picked him up and took him down because they train together now. With Laborio now. I think Laborio trains there because Laborio was here recently. Wasn't Mike Perry training with, um, didn't they have that big thing with Cerrone that time? I, I don't know. I don't know where he's training, but I know that he's, he's training. He was training there. No, no. Um, not that one. <laughs> I, love, I love how many things pop up. Like, yeah, he's, he's, almost he's, died here. Almost yeah. died there. Almost died here. Just like, write almost dies hanging himself because when you write Mike Perry almost dies. You painted a pretty You picture. have it's fine. 20. 20 million 300,000 results. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just need to, you need to be specific. No. I'm hanging myself. No. And again, yeah, third one, third one. There's still a lot of them. So did you click on it? Mm. Okay. Elo went and found us something that we can't read. Yeah. This is getting dark. Okay, <laughs> let's get back to the questions. Anyways, the point of the matter was that he hung himself yeah. accidentally and Jacare saved him. Yeah, he looks like a loose guy, but he seems nice. I don't know. If he comes down under, we'll, we'll grab coffins. Yeah. How do you see the Volkanovski Aldo fight going? Ooh, I um, I think I think Alex can take that fight. I, I think, think he so. can. I think I, he can. Um, I, I think he can go th- through him. Yeah, I I think if he just pressures him heavy. And, and just does what he does. Doesn't focus too much on trying and to force the takedown. He gets a, he gets a clean win, honestly. Mm. He lies cool. Down to earth, dude. He should be the presenter and fab on the controls. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that to me? Why would you say some shit like that? <laughs> That's so, that's Fucking so Eli cool. gets his mates to do it. If you don't even. <laughs> that's such a mean thing to say. Like, <laughs> Fucking Eli messaging there. He's sitting there messaging. Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, can you do this? <laughs> He's, he probably is the Robert Muldoon or whatever guy's name is. <laughs> My love. Oh, man. Rob, will you fight me at Broadmeadow? Where's, Bro- where's Broadmeadow? Melbourne. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Where? I need I need uh, I need more details. Uh, what's my walk around weight? My walk around weight is about ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven. Ninety eight. Um
Eli. Oh, they have a question for you. Where's the question? Yeah, but I don't want to read it out because I didn't see the ending. Can you read it? No, no, is it, why is it bad? <clears throat> no, you ready? Hey, Eli, I have a question. What are your thoughts smack talking from fighters and the retaliations that follow? For example, in interviews, everyone expects fighters to say they'll smash their opponents. My thoughts. Does this create some kind of schoolboy ripple effect? Because I've seen the Aussie news outlets make you out to be some sort of instigator. Make me yes. out to be instigator. Respect. Or Where when did you read that? Yeah, it's the same guy. I don't know. They make him out to be an instigator. That's what it says. Well, like, go. I don't mind a bit of smack talk. <laughs> I don't mind a little bit, but I don't. No, but apparently, if I'm reading it correctly, he's the he's the smack talker. Nah, maybe maybe it started for a question for you, and oh, they and they're meant, talking about. They then like, I think it yeah. makes me to be like, how am I an instigator? I I I think they're saying. I don't do anything. I've I've sat here before and think, just talk a little bit of smack, please, Rob. Just a little <laughs> bit. It's just not you. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. I know you outside of the podcast, yeah. and that it's just not you. I don't care. Um, but you like smack talk, I guess. No, I don't mind some. Do you know what I mean? I think when you're fighting someone, there's how much there is are, too much. Oh, family, religion, um, anything personal. Definitely country. Like I remember back when I was in Brazil and Chow Sonnen Ugh. used to say the things about the when us Americans were out. Do you know what I mean? Playing yeah, yeah, yeah. American technology and they were in the dirt, <laughs> Matt. That hurt a lot of Brazilians. Do you know what I mean? They were. It would I piss went, them off. Yeah, I thought that was <laughs> some of the things he said. But then, as years went on. You seen he was just, do you know what I mean, more comical about it and stuff Opposed like that. Opposed to like but some when of the newer first, guys that come When he you. first came on the scene, that's what, do you know what I mean, he was dead set serious about the things he was saying and that. Mm. And um, I thought that was too far. But I think just the little the little stuff, I don't mind a bit of smack talking. And as long as it's cheeky, do you know yeah, what I mean? I like think a tongue in cheek kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. If you keep it a little bit cheeky and you can go back and forth, but don't start with the yeah, just, religion, country. Just um, don't get personal. Poli- yeah. Like, you can... Yeah. Like in any competition game, you can talk a little bit of smack. I feel like smack talk makes the game fun. But yeah. like, yeah, just don't make it personal. When you make it personal, it's not fun anymore. It's crap. And you ruin the experience for me and you. <laughs> but again, I think some people will sell their soul. Do you know what I mean? To make an extra dollar. Yeah. They will sell their soul. So, you know what I mean? Talking a bit of smack about someone else. It's, yeah, that's not going to bother them. If Adesanya KOs you in three rounds, which I think he will, what will you give me as a gift? What will you give me if he doesn't? <laughs> like, wow. Eli, we know what you mean. Mm. Fuck, Eli's got a lot of love in this one. This is e- mad, Eli. Eli's popular. Thank you to all the family up in Ballarat. <laughs> yeah, it's just them. Yeah. And they're all, no, they're no, all on the one computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sh- sitting around. Eli, Eli does and have McDonald's. a following, man. Log it out and log it back in. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's Wi-Fi. Eli does have a big following. Thank you, West Ballina McDonald's. <laughs> um, Rich Flair says it's always personal. What's personal? The, the trash talk. Do you feel like it's always personal? No, nah, not at all. If you've played any video game, if you've seen me and Fab play any game, any game at all, like... I win. <laughs> it, the smack talk is out of this world, but it's never personal. Like A guy asked me, messaged me, I, I won't, uh, but from the podcast, asked me if I really beat you in that race. Did you lie to him personally as well? I, I, I fucking won. No, you didn't. But aside from all of that, aside from all of that, um, do you take, like, how, how, I'll, I'll ask you straight, how shook and destroyed are you <laughs> from the trash talk? Oh, mate, it keeps me up at night. Like they, I have to have at least two bottles of gin to get me, to get me calm enough to just start to think about going to bed. That, like, does the trash talk affect you in general? I don't know what's happening because I just... I live in <laughs> I live in another world half the time. I'm, I'm in my own bubble, and I just do my own thing. And my three kids are crazy; they take all my time there. And then when I get to the gym, the boys are trying to put it on me, and then we're playing there. And it's there's no time for that sort of stuff. Like, honestly, and and honestly, like I don't care. Like I honestly don't care. Like 
I, I don't know. Maybe it's a Australian cultural thing, but like we we've put it on each other since since we were born. Like <laughs> like since we were little kids, everyone tries to put it on each other. And you know, with with especially like with you, like me, you've been putting me down for years, <laughs> for years, saying I can't do things <laughs> and and making up fibs. To, to make me sound worse than I am. So like, I'm quite immune to this at this point. I'm not like, that I've, bad. I've, I've developed thick skin. <laughs> Do you think two Cejudos could beat Daniel Cormier? No. <laughs> no. I think, I think Cormier gets a hold of one of them and kills him <laughs> and then uses that one to kill the other. <laughs> Cormier is a big guy. He's huge. And he's a powerful man. What NRL team do you guys support? Uh, Brisbane Broncos. Broncos. It's what about you, Eli? West I'm Ballin and Magpies. <laughs> <laughs> Pembroke Panthers. Really? Yeah, yeah. You're a Panther Why? supporter. They used to call them the Chocolate Soldiers when I was young, so I just remember that. That sounded cool. <laughs> hey, wait, and can, then can you, you tell a story Panther. about what happened to you when you came to play? What down here? Yeah, when you and and then you stopped playing. How you got the eye? Yeah. You want, you want me to tell that story? Yeah. All right. Well, I moved down to Sydney from Ballina to play football. We were out visiting a, a friend who, who you played for, for Pembroke. I was playing for Parramatta 20s. We went out and visited a friend who was playing for Pembroke 20s. Uh, another guy from up home, Matty Taylor. Shout out. Um, we went and watched the game. Then the NRL game was afterwards. We had a few drinks and stuff like that. And we're heading to my friend's house that was just right near the, um, right near the field. And I got, yeah, I got some guys came up to us and asked us for our wallets and that and i told them where to go we got into a bit of a scrap that sort of ended i turned to walk away and i got hit from the back with a, um a dumbbell yeah it was a dumbbell but it, yeah yeah but it had like both the both the screws on one end <laughs> fuck and they hit me from behind i had to get plastic surgery on my how on the bad side was your eye what was, was really it lucky and pedro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been like a mace at that point that yeah, it was, it, it, I was clean out I, I woke up at the hospital in a pain hospital I remember like <clears throat> all I could see was crabs because I was still obviously uh, really concussed but I could only see like crabs everywhere in my vision and stuff like that but um, what crabs? I don't know I don't know what it was it was like crabs <laughs> and then a little bit later like everyone waving flags <laughs> Fuck! Have you ever been hit that hard? No, never. So yeah, that was pretty pretty ordinary. But I was lucky because it swelled up so bad. That's what sort of kept my eye in. Otherwise, your eye would have fallen. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Because it split all the way from the top, bottom, and then down there. They ever find the guys? No, no, no. I had a friend too that was there. Shout out to him too. He left me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! He, you got here with a dumbbell in your mate leg. No, he ran, he ran back then, but he left me when I was fighting, punching on with him. And when did he leave you? When we punch when they wanted to rob us, he ran. <laughs> <laughs> what a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. And did he come back and help you? After? Yeah, when I was oh, like, oh. So the story goes he might have came back and do you know what I mean towed them all up, but you I wouldn't know. know. <laughs> Fuck me dead. One guy said, Hey Rob, does your chubby cheeks help soften the blows? <laughs> That is so mean. There's a lot of mean people here. A lot like of Eli's fucking family I, on there. Just, I, I, they just want him to take over I feel the like podcast. People are getting meaner. They are. People are fucking mean. Why? I don't know. And then another guy said, "Hey Rob, how did you avoid getting popped by EPO?" You just cycle off it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> they just cycle off. Oh, um, <clears throat> would you? Would you ever do medieval MMA? Have you seen that? that when they have the, the shield like and the, the sword. The one-on-one -on -one or the 20-on-20? One-on-one. 20? On one. No, it's, it's the one where you have the, you're have dressed like a, like a knight. I've seen it. I've seen both. I <laughs> went online and I went through a whole thing. Would you, would you do that with the sword? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And would you do the three-on-three, five-on-five-ones? No, nah, not in a heartbeat. Why not? Because, I kid you not, it was like a 20-on-20 20 20 medieval thing. 
and the front lines ran in, like they all ran in charge, and the front lines hit shield on shield, boom, and they're all just trying to smack over the top like that. <laughs> but there's some dude in like the third or second row with a halberd <laughs> <laughs> jumping <laughs> over the top of like three guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the guy in the front line is just getting caved by from who knows where by some guy in the fourth row like with a helmet over the top of the head like it's you don't see what cleans you up and then if your side starts losing like you get surrounded by like six dudes with swords maces and flails <laughs> they belt you like no way I, um, the one on one yeah I'd give that a crack you know what looks interesting but the like the three on three, five on five MMA bouts. Yeah, that's what I'm asking as well. With the obstacles. Yes, would you do that? Yes, I would. Hundred percent. What would you? Would you reckon the others, David and Jacob, and without Izzy a doubt, would do all it? the boys will come in. You reckon they do it? Yes. So putting your we parkour, them. your parkour and your MMA together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm unbeatable in that sport. <laughs> like, like, please. But you know what? You know what always baffles me when I see those on YouTube, like. I see, I see, I always see one guy climb to the top of a tower, like climbing on top of the highest box for some reason. And I just think like, that's not going to end well. When, in, in a, a fight. In the obstacle group fighting. Because one dude always climbs to the highest point of the map, for sure. And does what? And then a second guy climbs up and picks him up and bombs him off it. Oh, fuck, I've seen that shit. <laughs> it- but I've got to, I've got to ask like, what was the intention on going up there? <laughs> I, I don't, I, I've seen people vision. land. <laughs> Getting vision for his team. <laughs> says, hi, know. Fab. I'm a human being. What are you? The fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of monster says that? <laughs> uh, why, why would you say that, man? Why, why would you do that to me? Um, um, I'll be nice, Rob. You have nice eyebrows. Rob, how tall was the building you jumped off again? <laughs> meters. Wow. wow. 10 meters. Um, that guy's legacy, but because that was podcast was a while ago now. Actually, real, real. <clears throat> oh, no, actually, don't worry. Fab, you look like a slender man. I am quite slender, buddy. I am. Um, Oi, Robbie, mate. <laughs> yeah? Rob, I don't know what it is that makes you so stupid, but it really works. <laughs> Why am I stupid? <laughs> How do I even come across stupid? Uh, but people, why are you like this? Yeah, Stuart, with the cow emoji symbol thing as a as a picture. What what makes me stupid? I'm not stupid. You're I stupid. Know. People are very mean, mate. <laughs> with that, we gotta let it go. We gotta get going. We've been here for yeah. a little bit over an hour. And you guys are just getting mean. You're at just this too, point. too mean. Like, You're <laughs> just too mean. We gotta pack up our ball and go home. Yeah, you guys. You guys I don't know how to play anymore. You guys are just talking. Say mean things. <laughs> Horrible mean things. things. Talk right. to you, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Have a good one and we'll be back on in. soon. Oh, no, no. Before we go, before we go, uh, tomorrow morning we're heading over to New Zealand. So we're hoping to do a podcast over um, in New Zealand. Uh, I don't know if you, if anyone wants to be on the podcast that's fighting Rob soon would be good that would be an interesting one <laughs> that would be a good podcast yeah. um, let's, get, let's get that hook on um so now we, we, we're going to be in new zealand for the next few days and uh we're going to be uh trying to get uh some meetings happening to promote the gap program which will be going ahead here in australia very soon uh we'll be promoting the gap program so hopefully either this year or or next year to start in new zealand um and yeah rob do you want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you'll be doing in new zealand yeah so we're going to be doing some cultural things um we're going to be trying to trying to get in touch with my cultural side a little bit more you know it's something that i've been meaning to do for a long time but it's it's hard trying to find time especially with like living fighting taking a run at the title having kids in between all that it's been hard so i, I really do look forward to going over there and and especially spreading the program or, or getting the program started over there because i think I think it can make a big difference in, in you know, in, in Māori culture. Um, as well as we're going to be going over there doing some promotional things. But for everyone in New Zealand, I think uh, in the Auckland region-ish, I will update you on details later. But there will be a meet and greet um, at, at, at a local gym in, in, in Auckland, I think, on Friday. So stay, stay tuned. 
um, pay attention to my Instagram. It'll probably be through a story and a post. I'll throw it up saying where I'm going to be. But yeah, come down if you're in the area when you find out where the area is. And uh, yeah, say hello. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.